Hi, and welcome to Kim Talks Resilience. This is live, and I'm telling you, um, I am so grateful to our guest today. Georgia has been brave enough to do the very first one. I've done lots of podcasts in past, and I've done lots of television hosting. However, usually I'm pretty heavily edited, so you're going to see the raw and real. But first, let me introduce our amazing guest today, who has stepped up to the plate and said, "Yes, I'll be your, I'll be your first one, Kim." We got it. Georgia G is the host of Treasures Within podcast and a success coach for multi-passionates and creative female entrepreneurs who want to create a successful business without niching down. After years of feeling like a failure for starting niche businesses and shutting them down, once the passion has disappeared, she decided to throw the traditional business playbook out the window and start doing business in a way that aligns with her multi-passionate nature. It was only then that she was able to create a business that ticks all the boxes, freedom, variety, money, and fulfillment. Now she helps multi-passionate creatives do the same so that they can experience the ultimate freedom, creative, location, and financial in their lives. So um, I would attempt to say Georgia's last name, but uh, many of you do know that I'm from Kansas, not gonna happen. So um, I will uh, be just calling her Georgia's G, but I will post her full name. Georgia, can you tell us your last name, please? Oh, hi, Kim. Hi, everyone. <laughs> happy to be and sure. My surname is Guazzarotti. <laughs> I know it's complicated. No, it's beautiful is what it is. So, George, tell us a little bit about who you are. And you've had kind of a unique journey yourself. You're, you know, you come from like where most Americans dream of going to and are now in another country. So give us a little bit of a background as to who you are, what you do, and, and kind of that transition you've been through over the last little while. Oh, absolutely. So I am a success coach for professionally and creative entrepreneurs. And I originally come from Italy. I was born in a small village there. And all my life, I was told that I had to, you know, find one career, pick one path and stick with it for the rest of my life. And... I honestly tried, <laughs> but I had like so many different things that I wanted to do that every time that I tried to pick one passion, pick one career, it never worked for me. I tried being a teacher, I tried working as a translator, I tried being a personal assistant, and it was always reinventing myself and feeling like a failure and feeling flaky for not being able to stick to anything. And six years ago, I decided to be brave and start my business as a freelance writer and to move to London because in Italy is an amazing country, but our freelancing still is very much up and coming. And so I moved to London and I wanted to give my big passion and go because I was sure that writing was it. It was the only constant in my life. The other passion were like I've been in flow and this one was my constant. And I said, okay, I moved. And I had two amazing years in London working for a writer for busy businesses. And you know, on paper, it was an amazing career because I was going to all these fancy events where journalists get to go and given all these free products. And I was making money from my passion. I was living in this beautiful city and everyone saw that I had it made. But inside, I was feeling so miserable because even though I was doing something that I loved, I love writing and I love beauty, just writing about that all day long, it felt really, stifling and really restrictive and so looking back at my journey and trying to find my way and find this one true passion and trying to monetize every passion that I had and even the one that was supposed to be the biggest passion it did not work 
And that's when I realized that, okay, wait a minute, maybe it's not me that I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not picking the wrong passion every time. Maybe it's just this whole picking your one true passion, like picking your niche that is not working. Maybe we don't all have a one true passion. Some of us are just more of a generalist and we like different things. So if I like multiple things, wouldn't it make more sense for me to create a business that allows me to do all the things that I love? And when I had the realization, it felt so right. But of course, then there is the entire journey of how to get there. Because when you drop your niche, like we all know the niche mode, then it works very well for lots of businesses. So I'm not uh, this and that at all. I just say it's not working for me. But it was a, a journey, a progression to find what actually worked for me and how I can combine all my interests into one business. And now that I have done it myself through lots of trial and error, I help other women do the same so they can shortcut their journey and stop feeling like a failure and like flaky for not wanting to niche down. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned uh, a couple things in there that I'd actually like to to comment on. So first off, I want everybody to know that statistically for a person under 50, they will have 12 career trajectories within their lifetime, 12. So if you're not even halfway, and by the way, I wanna put this out there. Uh, if you can guess George's age, uh, basically I thought Georgia was one of my kids. Like just amazing. So she's doing something right when she talks about taking care of herself and really looking at, um, uh, you know, how she's showing up. Um, but yes, I wanted to talk about everybody. They, they anticipate 12 career shifts or because we have such a side hustle, many people are doing two and three different things because we are all multi-passionate. We are there is nobody I know that's single faceted. We have these loves. You love music or you love this, or you love that. And the reality is, is we should work in what we love because, you know, it's going to create a better result. Um, and then when you, you talked about personal assistant, it's funny how you talked about teacher and personal assistant and translator. So I, I, I found that was an interesting uh, journey of careers because Teacher, obviously, that's what you're still doing now, but in your own terms. Translator, you're actually listening to the language of what people are providing you and helping them find the meaning behind it. So it's still there. And uh, that personal assistant helping to guide people to their next level. I think that's that's pretty cool. When And when we talk about that whole all day long thing, and this is, uh, this is kind of what I'd like to dive into because a lot of entrepreneurs and small businesses are really guilty um, for working 12 and 14 hours a day. So they, they pay themselves, you know, $6 an hour. Um, but when we look at top uh, thought leaders out there, and so like when you look at the Elon Musk and you look at the Bill Gates, they'll, they'll be very clear and say that they have four hours of high productivity thinking, four to six hours tops, right? What are some of the uh, advice or, or suggestions that you have for small businesses and entrepreneurs who are, they're under that crunch. They feel like they have to perform and they're working a little, putting in a little too much time, but not working effectively. Can you share with us some of your strategies or thoughts around better time management or better time productivity for uh, entrepreneurs. Absolutely. This is something that I struggle with myself, especially in my previous businesses, where I was funding, I was working really for 15, 16 hours a day trying to do all the things. And my business was not growing. There was always a ceiling to how much I could do. And I realized by work, when I started working with a coach, because I was, again, like, I'm doing all the things. Like, I'm on all the platforms where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing all the strategies. I'm doing everything the gurus are telling me. And on top of it, I'm not growing, but I'm actually running myself through the ground and getting burned out. So I started working with a coach. 
And the breakthrough that I had, because they were encouraging me to work less, to work less hours. And I said, how is it even possible to work less hours? And what I realized is that all this business, all this trying to be everywhere and do all the things, it's really it's a distraction from the one thing that you want to be doing. Like for me, the thing that I was avoiding was visibility. So really stepping up like I'm doing now and doing my podcast, doing videos, just sharing, sharing of myself because I was doing all the behind the scenes tasks, but I was not actually putting myself out there as that leader, the child, when you have a business, you are the face, you are the leader. People want to see you and talk to you. And I find this is this for many business owners, especially women, is such a big fear of visibility and we tend to do everything else so that we then don't have time to do the one thing that actually works. And so if you are finding yourself struggling to do all the things, I would actually encourage you to ask yourself, what is the one thing that you are avoiding? Because you are doing all the things and it is not working. And, there is, and the one thing that is going to work is the one thing that you are avoiding doing. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they say there's a, a saying in uh, North America it is uh, eat the frog first, meaning that the thing that you don't want to do is the frog and, you know, eat the frog first. Right. And maybe, maybe that's not even North America. Maybe that's Kansas. I can't tell you. But that's a saying that I grew up with, you know, do do what you don't want to do first so you can you can enjoy the things that you do enjoy. And if it's something that's truly not within your skill set or aptitude, you need to hire it out. Don't pound your head against the desk and do it. Um, uh, visibility. Let's I would love to dive into this for just a few minutes. So um, visibility is a real challenge for a lot of women, even my even myself. And I have done I have countless hours of broadcast television. And like I said, today was one of the first days I've actually gone truly live and unedited. Still have all my makeup on, still have my hair done, still have my earrings on. So I, I and I, I, I see come up some of my heroes. I don't know if you follow Mel Robbins. She is like one of my all time favorite author speakers out there. And the thing that I find is she, over the last little while, has evolved, and you'll see her in her rollers going to the kids' school. She'll have hair rollers in. She'll, you know, no makeup. So what are your thoughts around getting, what are some strategies that you could share that you personally have put in place to get comfortable with invisibility? Oh, yes, this has definitely been a journey for me. And when I first started being visible, I did it in my Facebook group, which doing lives in my Facebook group, which at the time, it was mainly composed of my friends and a few strangers when it was at the very beginning of, so, of, the, of the group. So I do encourage you to just do a practice with people that, you know, in a small setting, start, start with something small where you feel comfortable. And you realize when, when, I, when I first did it, I was actually a bit you know, nervous because, okay, these are my friends, but what are my friends going to think? And the support that I got from my friends, they were all cheering me on and encouraging me. And that really gave me a lot of confidence to, because these, these fears are in our heads. But when we try it when we do it we realize that actually people are much kinder and nicer than we think and uh, you can actually inspire someone because people told me you know you were so brave like i would not be able to do that or something that i said inspired them so start small because you never know who you might be impacting and the other thing I want to mention is to again don't overthink it because at the beginning again I so that I had to have this full face of makeup and to do my hair and to have a nice dress on. And I had this calendar with okay, every day I'm going to talk about this topic. And it was like so complicated. 
the by the time that I was actually meant to go live, I was already so exhausted and just not feeling at all. And so today I am much more flexible because it is it, because I before doing anything, I really have this ritual when I just focus on one person. For me, it's the George that I used to be a few years ago when I was feeling lost and flaky and just reconnecting with the feeling and what does she need to hear? Because your audience, they don't care like if you have your hair done, what dress are you wearing? Of course, it's nice. We all like to look our best, don't we? But they really are looking for those nuggets of wisdom. They are looking for something that you can share that can change their lives. So just reconnecting with your purpose, with that person and trying to make a difference for the one person, for me, it really helped to calm the nerves and just allows me to go for it. Yeah, and I think that's the big one is getting comfort comfortable with it. And I think that's, that's, it's interesting you talk about that because as coaches or practitioners, speakers, leaders, we have to lead by example. So I believe that, you know, yes, you're correct. A lot of women, the average in, I don't know globally, but I know that in North America, the average female income is $46,000 a year. So when we look at that, that's not a lot of money. And especially with inflation and, you know, chain supply and everything that's going on. So when we look at this, you know, I think that women who get to that 46 or 50,000 and then they start getting comfortable getting out there and getting visible because you have to be also ready in case somebody takes up, uh, you know, uh, decides to have a comment or take a shot at you. I mean, I, I, I get them now uh, and I make my husband read them all. <laughs> I'll be honest, if you're going to say something mean about my pink hair, I'm not going to read it. My husband will read it, delete it, and I'll keep on moving forward because I've got, I still have fairly thin skin. I'm still fairly fragile, right? So, um, you know, that, that being said, so we've talked about visibility. We've talked about, um, you, know, uh, you know, being accountable to oneself and following your passion. Um, so I kind of think the last thing I'd really kind of like to delve into is, you know, how, how do you get, like, how do you get started? How do you even identify what the passion is that you should chase? What is, where do you, where do you invest? How do you know that it's the right path? Well, that is a great question. And you really, it, it really, the, really, it's the way that you feel. It is the, because I have chased so many passions in the past and it never felt aligned. I don't, I wish that I could have like a magic formula that I could give you, but it really is tuning in with yourself and, and it's a process. Like you don't, you will never like, magically stumble upon your passion. You will never fall from the sky. It really is about, you, you start by following an interest. Like when I started at the beginning with my you know, freelance writing career, that started with a beauty blog. I just saw other beauty blogs online and decided that, okay, I want to have my own. And I didn't know, I didn't have any plans for them to monetize or anything to come out of it. But that led to a career in writing, which took me to London. And in London, I found coaching, which is what I do now. So it really is following the breadcrumbs. It's, if you are curious about something, then give yourself permission to explore it. And it will take you to the next thing that you are meant to do. And, you know, we usually tend to stop in experience because we feel like if we are redirected, if we pivoted, because those spread crowns, they, they constantly take you somewhere else because we are always evolving. We are always growing. We are not meant to stay stagnant and only do one thing. And 
that's what really, in my opinion, is um, stopping winning because we feel like we have to get there, but there really is no destination. As long as you're feeling that you're pursuing your curiosity and you're doing something that you love and it feels right to you, then give yourself permission to follow that and you will be direct to the thing that you're meant to do in this period of your life. And then when something else calls you, give yourself permission to follow that as well because we are meant to do so many things with this one life. Absolutely. We're going to be around for a long, long time. I mean, I, I'm only at the halfway mark. There's still lots of room. Betty White, gotta love Betty White. Um, you know, she, I think Betty really taught us uh, a ton of, you know, they say refire, don't retire. Everything has an opportunity. And I think that we all have opportunities to, to, um, to get back. So uh, interesting stat I read the other day, only 29% of society does volunteering. And Ooh. yet some of my, yes, yet some of my best clients and best opportunities have come from volunteering for, uh, for in different communities or different needs that I, I'm passionate about. One of my big passions is food. Uh, one of my, I, I love food. I, I love feeding people. Come to my house, plan to leave five pounds heavier. I promise you, I'm, I'm not going to be in this alone. Um, so, you know, I, I, th I think that that's maybe, you know, when we look at kind of the triple bottom line of our business, we've got our people, our purpose and our planet, right? And a lot of times that that we we miss that that opportunity, like in planet, to give back through volunteerism. Uh, is there any suggestions that you have had around volunteerism or community work that has uh, resonated with your business and been a, a monetization opportunity? I am just moving into this myself and finding more and more opportunities to give back and mentor other entrepreneurs. So right now it is not led to a particular uh, monetary uh, opportunity, but just that giving back, that is the, it is the main because I feel now that I am in this place where I have done it. I have a business that ticks all the boxes. And I really want to help other entrepreneurs getting involved with, I'm getting involved in other organizations, especially with teenagers and younger adults, like to, to help them when they are in that transition that they are still finding their way and they are being pushed to pick stuff. And it's here in Europe, there is still this mentality of, picking one career for the rest of your life, even though that's not the reality anymore, that's still what schools and parents and teachers are pushing on you. And so it, it really is satisfying to actually work with them and open their eyes to what is possible and really sowing the seeds for the next generation of entrepreneurs that have so much to offer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they have to serve themselves first so that they can serve others. Um, what is, as, as a coach and as a leader, a mentor, um, what is the one thing that you hear when you see the, this, an amazing woman that you know is primed and ready to go to next level if she just has that accountability with somebody? What and yet she throws up an, an excuse because it always is an excuse. So what is the number one objection or excuse you hear? And what is your thought or your um, kind of your response to that? Yeah, so working with multi-passionate women and creatives, they have some amazing idea for their businesses Again, they don't want to niche down. They want to do multiple things. And I find when we work together that inevitably in the first cycle, maybe third session, you know, they, they know this is the thing they want to create. They say they don't know, but it always comes out of them. And in the next breath, 
that tell themselves, I can't do that. That has never been done before, and so it will never work. And, <laughs> and I think it is crazy because I really believe that you would not have a desire or a calling if it wasn't meant for you. And just because no one else has ever done it, it doesn't mean that it's not working. It just means that what we see around us, again, is this push to niche down and to be in a certain way. And even though there are more and more multi-passionates that are creating business doing multiple things, that's still not the norm. And that's we may we tend to always second guess ourselves. And if we can't see it, there really is resistance to being that trailblazer and being the first one to do something. But again, if you have that calling, then it is meant for you. And it is your duty to step up and fulfill the calling because it's not just doing it for yourself, but also doing it for your family, for your community, and just inspiring that next generation of, of entrepreneurs that needs to see women, multi-passionate women, all in all of who they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I think I'd like to close this on is uh, like a quote or something that is kind of your your guiding quote, something that when when times are tough, and you're really pushing your resilience. What is a quote or a thought or thought leader, somebody that you you think of and you pull that in and you go, ah, I can do this, right? So what is your quote? Uh, I would say, you know, probably I'm butchering it, <laughs> but it's like, you know, you're going to be criticized anyway. Even if you don't, do the thing that you want to do, the thing that it feels so hard and feels so scary, you are still going to be criticized for not doing it. So you might just as well go ahead and live your life to the full and have no regrets because it is your life. And again, you have, you have been given all these gifts, all these passions, all these desires for a reason. So people are going to say, Whatever they want anyway. So just follow your own path. Follow your path. How do you say follow your path in, in, in Italian? Segui il tuo sentiero. Okay, say that one more time, loud and bold. <laughs> Segui il tuo sentiero. Awesome. I think I think that's going to go, like that's going to be one of our quotes. So Georgia, again, I can't thank you enough for stepping up and and working with me to help figure out how to better serve the women uh, by creating these live stream Tuesdays. Um, are we Tuesday or Wednesday there? What time are we there? Well, right now here yeah, it's eight o'clock in the evening. Eight o'clock in the evening on what day? Uh, oh, on today. You're, we're on the same day, right? Okay. Yes. So Tuesday, 8 p.m. Great way to round out the day though. What a great way to close Tuesdays. <laughs> Um, so Georgia, can you share with us where we can find you, how we can connect with you? Oh, absolutely. So my website is the treasureswithin.net and on there you can find all my social networks uh, and my newsletter and everything that I do. So if you would like to connect, uh, just head over to the website and I will have in touch with you. Amazing. Amazing. So again, I'm Kim Hayden. I am the queen of resilience and I'm looking for queens all over to come and share their stories of resilience, inspiration, and help other women scale up. So please, 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 please help all these amazing women out. And it's as simple as like, share, comment, and subscribe. We need your support. And ladies, you are a queen. So put that crown on. Let's make it happen. Again, thank you, Georgia. I'm Kim Hayden, and this is the Resilient Series, and Kim Talks Resilience. Mm -hmm.